Hello, Steve, and welcome and thanks for agreeing to show us one of your games from Seniors Tournaments this year. Thank you, Natasha. Happy to uh, to be here. Excellent. Not sure um, how good the game will be. You've been playing a lot of well, seniors, well, haven't well, you? Well, you well, played, you played all sorts. You played um, Kenilworth, I think, and... Uh, yes, oh. I've had a few successful or an uns and unsuccessful tournaments, I think. Kenilworth was my first seniors tournament, which was a complete disaster, but uh, it got a little bit better as the year went on. So as I played a bit well, more, that's it. you have to you have to kind of learn how it all works, don't you? The first one's just a warm up, and then and then you're into uh, three days of warm up, yeah. Proper seniors <laughs> chess, and you're getting older all the time. We all are, so then you know. More well, you and, and I should be the youngsters of seniors. We're chess, the youngsters. So, uh, of we should this be event. at an advantage, but uh, yeah, uh, relative advantage. Yeah, and and any particular highlights to your year of seniors twenty twenty two? No, I, I think the two team events of you know we did in um, Europe european and the world i mean they're different from normal tournaments um i mean there's the team aspect which is always good uh, and there's been kind of a quite a nice kind of camaraderie and um mm. social side to to the tournaments and they're a little different from you know some of the kind of more international opens <laughs> obviously there are no 15 year old indian kids to worry That's about cool. so you know if i look at back at my games you know there's less long theoretical games and you know, games starting kind of earlier, um, you know, obviously players who are st strong players still, um, but, you know, maybe not so much up on the cutting opening theory, mm. uh, but also, but, but also, you know, strong fighters, right? People who've got 30 years of chess. So, you know, yeah. lots of fighting games and a lot of, you know, a lot of resistance. Um, so, yeah, it's, I've enjoyed. I've en I've enjoyed it, and it's 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 quite it's quite nice, and and it's different. It's definitely different from playing broader opens. Mm. Cool. cool. And the game you're showing today, I think, is a a Trumpovsky opening. Which... Yeah. So the, the background to this one is, I think, I think a day or so earlier, I'd had a bit of a disaster. I, I was doing really well in the tournament. I think three and a half out of four, four and a half out of mm. five, and then I managed to lose a plus six position with one seniors moment i think you'll call it um <laughs> so i decided that i'd uh, go all in if you like for this game um and i hadn't literally hadn't played the tromposki for two or three years i've been learning some proper openings mm -hmm. and so i thought well time to wheel it out at least it may have some surprise value since i haven't played it for uh three years but i used to i used to play it almost exclusively yeah so the main move here is um is e4 but knight d2 is is a kind of a fairly normal move um like this is a, a team one is it steve this is yeah, this was well. this was round eight of the world no the, not the european, european team was, so i yes. was playing for england second team i think top board yes and the guy I was playing was a pretty strong player he he was actually i think on, on you know going for the the top board prize i think he had a 2600 mm. rating performance before this game he was around about 2400 2390 player but he was having a very good tournament wow. yeah so uh, pretty pretty good player yeah and it was uh i think the penultimate round so you so, were helping uh, hebs weren't you to get so his you were you were helping mark hebden to get his board prize but well, yeah hebden. i think this guy was ahead of hebs yeah. on the board prize so yeah beating him it helped mark win the first board one prize but i'd like to say that was my only motivation but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, this, so this move order is quite interesting. So he plays h6 and c5, which looks very natural to kick the bishop. But by playing h6, then c5, it allows this gambit idea uh, with e4 here, which I actually think is quite, quite, a, strong, um, quite a strong line. The, the main lines here go sort of cd4, e5, um, g5, bishop g3, knight d5, h4. And, you know, white gets good compensation for the pawn. He'll normally win the pawn back on d4 at some point. Um, I have had one game on this, but I literally hadn't looked at this position for about two or three years. So even mm. though I quite like these positions, it's not necessarily the sort of position you want when uh, you haven't looked at it for a few years and your opponent's bashing out his moves, which is what yeah. happened in this game. Okay. So, um, but, but I do know the ideas quite well. So that, that always kind of helps in these positions. Mm. So if you go back to move four, is it? Um, yeah, he played d5, um, which is a move I think Caruana's played. Okay. Um, 
in the past. And so you, you go on um, the next couple of moves, you are fairly forced, I think. And you get this kind of structure, you get this sort of structure that's, it's a little bit like a French Tarash where Black's played an early G5 and white, Black's going to put pressure on D4 and E5. And if white plays really slowly and doesn't play H4, you're you're likely to lose something. Yeah. Uh, and your center will come okay. under pressure. Yeah. So H4 is the way to play just to open the position up and take advantage of Black's weakened structure. Yeah. So he's got to do something about you're going to just. Yeah. I mean, he could take on GH4, but then I'll take with a rook. Mm. Um, when I will come to F3, I get good active play. Mm. Um, even if I lose a pawn, these positions mm. are a bit better for white. So he played rook G8. He played it immediately. So I think he was still in oh, so he's still in his theory, I'm sure. He's in yeah. the preparation. I, you know, D5, the D5 move is not a normal, is not a common move. So right. I didn't, yeah. I, you know, I, I knew the ideas, but I didn't know the actual moves. But I, I managed to find the right moves over the board. So. Fair enough. Oh, this rook, is nice. Rook, rook H7, yeah. Go for the uh, go for the direct. Uh, it is direct for sure. Yeah. Direct attack. Yeah. Takes and then Queen H5. H5. This is what everyone likes. To yeah. Do. So yeah. he's got but to do something defend. about that. Queen E7. Knight F3. Fairly natural moves. Yeah. So in this situation, um, you know, obviously I'm going to try and. Um, win back the d4 pawn at some point i'm going to play bishop b5 the issue i've got is that although my rook on h7 looks great at some point he's going to play bishop g7 and knight f8 and you're going to lose the you're going to either lose the rook or you're going to have to spend some moves moving it back yeah. and you know the really the really the way is to work out how to um sacrifice the exchange while getting um getting active right mm -hmm. so that's really my plan here is to sacrifice the exchange and yeah. get comp good compensation. Ooh, it's quite all or nothing this game, isn't it? Because yeah, but it's you always get a lot of positional compensation um, for this. It's it, it's you you sacrifice yeah. you may sacrifice the exchange, but but you get good compensation. Um, and, and this position is good for me actually. I mean, it's hmm. I don't know what Stockfish says, but it's sort of plus one or plus one and a bit or some, something like that. So I, I think it's um, just a nice position for white. Um, so yeah, so here sacrifice the exchange. Yeah. Um, what did he play now? Uh, King d7. King d7. I hadn't expected that. So if you go back and I'll just show you why King d7 is mm. a good move. Mm. If, for example, um, he played rook h8, um, White will then play um, bishop h4, and if say queen f8, exploiting the pin, queen g5 just wins. Um, coming down on the, I think that wins. Spend, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can play bishop d7, but then uh, bishop c6 and knight f6 is very strong. So, so king d7 is an idea of moving your king over to the queen side. Was he still um, playing really fast? Do you remember? No, he started playing a bit slower, but um, yeah, I wasn't sure. He was he was well up on the clock on. You know, obviously, I've made this is a fairly committal type position where you have to spend a bit of time. Mm. Um, but I was also trying to play by feel a bit in these types of positions. You're just trying to play for the initiative and play for the uh, for the squares. So yeah, I played Bishop H4. I think the computer's first choice is just slower Knight B3. But Bishop H4 is very much, I think, the human move, which is mm. to um, you know you hit the queen with tempo and you get your bishop to a better square. Um, it's a good move, but I think knight b3 is even more accurate and play bishop h4 a move later. Um, I, I think the point maybe is that black can't do that much in mm. the meantime. So now knight f6, he's got to take. Actually, the computer says I think you could actually play ef as well, which, right. but it doesn't look very obvious, right? To, to you know, to looks like you want e to put your pawn there to kind yeah, of... Yeah, bishop f6, which controls h8 and has, yeah. keeps the bishop very strong, looks much better. And I I didn't even consider ef, but ef is also... Yeah, because also these good. pawns might like move down the center. And leave. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't it doesn't look very appealing. Uh, bishop f6, I didn't think about really. That was... Uh, yeah. But it's apparently it's playable. Okay. Um, and so rook g2. So yeah, this is a kind of a fairly critical point of the game now and you know what i played was knight f3 which is just to go and, and 
which looks at, again a, a natural move to to develop your, all your pieces to take on d4 open up the position a bit and then 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 to move my queen over to the queen side which is what happened but um i think the computer's first choice is actually just to play queen f3 straight away right and then move the queen over to queen f3 to a3 and you'll see why in a little bit um which is you know it's a bit better for white um so queen f3 i think rook g6 queen a3 um oh so you not rook g6 yes but rook g8 sorry okay. rook g8 queen a3 queen f8 and then bishop c6 bc and queen a5 and then bring the knight to b3 and you know white's got a nice position um it's not winning but it's it's more than enough for the exchange Mm. with the Very dark nice. square control yeah so yeah I, I was trying to get an even better version than this but it it, yeah. um, it probably that was probably better um than what i played so i played knight f3 um which i think um what did he do he played um king c7 he did king c7 which is fine um and i took on d4 and this is a crucial move now. He he played um, a6, which the, the reason I think he played a6 is he's worried by my plan of bishop f1, rook f2. If he doesn't, so if he doesn't play a6, I may play yeah. bishop f1, rook f2, and then the knight comes in to b5 and d6. Um, but I think that would have been better. So I think the best move for him now is, is to allow that because you'll see what happens after a6 which just mm. he loses if he plays bishop d7 for example instead of a6 i think it would have been better then white plays say bishop f1 uh rook f2 um knight b5 check yeah check king somewhere i guess king b8 King V8, because he can't go to C8 because of the knight. Yeah, check. King B8. And then I, I was originally going to play Queen. I think if I play Queen H4, but apparently if he takes on, I think he can maybe, maybe be able to take on F6. Okay, give back the exchange. And give back the exchange. And White's still got full compensation, but it's more yeah. dynamically equal. Um, yeah. And it's less clear. So that's, but again, it doesn't look that. You've got to see it looks, the visually it looks to me it looks nice for white but yes i think maybe it's easier still to play for white but um yeah. but i think black can hang on in that position okay so he whoop no go go back a bit more he did um so he played a6 um and the yeah. problem with a6 you'll see now is i i, I can take bc and now I play with the queen f3. So you remember where queen f3 earlier? Yeah. The first choice. Here I get a really good version of it because I've now got my knight to d4. And yeah. then I'm going to transfer the queen to the queen side. And he thinks he can play rook g6 and f6. But you'll see I've got a nice little intermezzo. Okay, so he's... Oh, you've got an intermezzo. This is great. Okay. Yeah, so now he plays queen a3. Now I play queen a3. And now after rook f6... Oh, you, you've got queen d6 check. Yeah, so I don't take back. And so it's quite quite nice. Queen, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, king has to move. Seven. And now I can yeah. not take back again and rook d3. Oh, really nice. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and it's only got one move to avoid being checkmated. Rook b3, yeah. king c8. Yeah, so now, you've got both your major pieces in there before you... Yeah, so now I've got this beautiful position with all the dark square control, uh, knight against bear bishop. Um, and the game would almost be over, but you know, my control is so big, but it, we're, we're approaching yeah. time control and I'm, right, I'm a bit yeah. short on time. Yeah. But uh, obviously got a huge position. Yeah. Uh, clearly don't want to swap off the queens. No, you're going <laughs> to um, mate him. But he's not letting you, not immediately. Yes, but no, 95 is also a nice, quite a killer move. Wait, wait, 95. 
So, oh, just Queen you just go with e3. e3. Yeah. And now, this is the other final interesting part of the game now. Queen f6 looks like a, a rookie blunder because it, it looks like you could take on d7 and play yeah. queen b7 check and win a rook, rook. Be a rook up. Yeah. Yeah. But practically, it was a good try because it allows you black to go for a perpetual. It doesn't work, um, yeah. as you'll see in the game, but um, it, was a, it was a good practical try. And actually, I, I probably shouldn't have gone for this because I didn't see okay. right to the end. I just yeah. intuitively didn't believe he had a perpetual. Yeah. It, it was quite close, as you'll see. So we repeat a couple of times just to get to the time control. Now, if you slow down a bit here, you, mm. you've got to find a way. He's threatening, um, you know, just to play queen f4. And if I play king c1, he can play. So queen f4, king d1, queen f1, king d2, queen f4, which is perpetual. So mm. you've got to find this way of getting to king to c1 in this position uh, without... Um, but yeah, without his queen being able to go to f4. Yeah. So you have to triangulate with your queen to go to d2. You'll see what happens here. Yeah, so if you go back and before queen b4. Yeah, so in this position, he now, let's say he plays, I don't know, queen h4. Now you could play king d1. So you don't go to d2. And okay. let's say he plays queen h1. Yeah. King D2, yeah. then Queen check to G2 or so, or to H2, and now and you play King C1. On, um, you see, he can't get his Queen to F4 with check, and you hide your Queen away. But, okay, but what about Queen G5? King D2, Rook, Queen, uh, Rook D2, Rook, Rook D2, D2 now. D2. And now Queen yes. G1, Rook D1, and then the King yeah, comes to B1. Okay. So it was a little bit hairy as I had to yeah. work this through because you know, allowing this probably it was it was objectively the best move but not the best practical way of playing because mm. you, you had to find this um, winning sequence which I probably didn't need to make it allow this perpetual opportunity. No, okay. Oh, but well. anyway, the, yeah. but after finding this this idea of king e two to e one to d one mm. to c one. This is just winning now. So he, he'd seen this, and um, once, you, once it's you that's doing the checking, it's much better. Isn't yeah, it? once I'm doing the checking, it's the game is <laughs> over. I think I'm a, I'm a real up at the end of the day. So I cool. think he resigned well, about it now. So very nice game, Steve. Yeah, thanks for showing us that. And I liked the two intermezzos in the middle. I thought that was really nice. <laughs> it's always quite nice when you can do it, and it's fairly fairly risk free as well. So yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't the hardest thing to find at the time, but uh, yeah, it's quite aesthetically nice to play brilliant okay so thanks very much for showing the games and um and i'm glad you've been enjoying your uh, year of playing lots of seniors events and uh, hopefully you'll get the chance to play some seniors events in uh, 2020 hopefully we'll do another well. one next year yeah no it should be it should be excellent good. It should be great right. well, thanks a lot nice, see you see you then bye